Hmm. Someday. I it actually it'll go up to higher. So the they go from ten to, to fourteen. I think that they're designed. So it is potentially possible Intel will push a fourteen core chip. You know, I mean, we don't. I I, I, I checked Intel's prices yesterday. We checked them this morning. I'm going to keep checking their price list. I saw a story that said Intel slashing prices. I don't know what they're talking about because those slash prices are like uh, the same was, as what they've been selling for. It was just a micro, uh, micro center having a sale and people trying to ride the Ryzen hype wave. Yeah, see, that that ain't right. I I, 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 I think it's, it's entirely possible. We don't know how Intel's going to react to this. It is entirely possible they'll come out with a, a 14 core Core i7 part, you know, Broadwell E that, that pushes that pushes it but most likely bucks, huh I, th I wouldn't be surprised if they made the 10 core chip a thousand bucks if yeah. they did ever come out with a 12 core and yeah. make the 12 core more the new <laughs> 1700 dollars price yeah the new one i don't know those that pricing structure may not exist anymore but also you know we are rushing towards skylake x right there's rumors of a new lj 266 i for what whatever the pin count is and uh, there you're gonna get you'll get quad cores up to your 10 core and it's gonna be all super craziness i'm hearing you know people already start to hype it in the background i think they're gonna sort of like well let's just let's just keep it going we don't they may not think they have much of a threat with ryzen and then we'll see their response in skylake x this summer i think is what the what the uh, sort of predictions are the, the thing with intel i mean all their desktop consumer chips the price of those tie into the pricing for their server chips. So if they change things too much on the desktop side, people are gonna be like looking at the price structure of the Xeons as well and being like, yeah, so it's kind of like a big internet connected thing. I don't think it's quite as easy for them to drop prices that quick without having ramifications across the whole lineup. Yeah, and the, you know, the weird thing about Intel's world is is we, we get in these weird zones where Core i7 will often be more expensive than Xeon. Like, I could go out and I could buy a 14-core Broadwell E on eBay for, like, $400. <laughs> I mean, it's like, that's insane if you think about it. And then even, like, some of the, there's a lot of people, you know, that sort of do the, you know, they don't want to pay for an 8-core Core i7. They go, they'll go buy the Xeon version or something. So they sort of get the, the basically the same cores, but a Xeon. Um, I don't know. But, I mean, again, you know, they, if, AMD is not just it's just not about Ryzen today. It's also about Naples. So Intel's got to sort of recalibrate against Naples and against Ryzen, figure out their prices. And I, I don't know. I, I I just don't think. I can't remember what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm on like four hours of sleep. Adam, Adam's like, I thought this was gonna be a quick question. That's why I asked it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, whatever. <laughs> All right, All let's right. wrap it up. I'm going to wrap it up. This is so weird to have Adam sit at a table. It's actually kind of nice. Yeah, well, it's so, you know, I, I, I like being sequestered over there. I kinda yeah, back in the van. Yeah. Back in the van. <laughs> so we're the... All right, okay. So check back in two weeks for your fix of PC Talk on the Full Nerd. For audio listeners, subscribe to us on iTunes. Please say you like us. Uh, Google Play or Stitcher saying questions and questions. It has been a long, questions. long week. Saying questions and comments to the full nerd at pcworld.com or just say hi. Thanks for coming. I'm Gordon Nunn with Brad Charkas. Who is going to sleep soon. Oh, and me too. Lucky, and lucky. Adam Patrick Murray. Well, I don't know how he's going to take us out here. He's going to have a computer. I'm, I'm going to watch, watch this. Peace. But how does it stop? Well, no, 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 you were supposed to be quiet for a second. Now I have to run over and hit stop. All right. And Adam Patrick Murray will take us out. Peace. But, but now I have to run over and hit stop. But it, isn't the feed still there? <laughs> I was going to pick my nose. <laughs> leap motion, baby. He's got those leap motion controllers. Oh, I had sleep with me.
Excellently done, heroes. The enemy's punisher is no more. There is no rest left for me. Of course. Our forge is lost. the shrine's guardians and let loose the punch upon our foes. A three hundred something dollar, seventeen hundred no. probably makes more sense Our than an eight hundred X. Just like a three hundred something dollar, seventy seven hundred makes more sense than a six nine hundred K. Um, so yeah, the seven the seventeen hundred is definitely interesting. To to. Yeah, I mean, I I liked it. I mean, just I mean, because it was the same as the eight hundred X and cheaper. That's like I was like, okay, that's a good thing. But then also was the fact that it's really cool. It's got the Lower TDP of 65 watts, so it's 30 less than the 1800X and the 1700X. And right. as a result of that, it ran much cooler. My 1800X at IO ran just, just around 50 degrees Celsius, 
um, when it was overclocked, and this one was like 29 degrees Celsius, so about 20 degrees cooler. And that stayed the same with overclocking too on air. It stayed under yeah. 60 C, so it ran lower, much cooler. Yeah. Lower power budget, so yeah, it makes sense. Uh, the temperatures, by the way, are uh, temperatures are very difficult to accurately measure with the uh, yeah. software used matters a lot. Yeah, that was yeah that was another big thing. For the MSI Afterburner with uh, Reaper Tuner, which is the overlay I use in pretty much all of my side-by-side -side comparisons. It's, that's not hooking in getting the temperatures right now, because we're going to bother displaying it. So they do quickly talk to them before releasing the files, what was not the end of the results. I was, yeah. using, I was using the SIV uh, tuner from Gigabyte that is bundled with the motherboard, and that was able to give me uh, accurate CPUs and it also has the red debug LED on the motherboard. Yeah, um, yeah, so before release, it, uh, it got an update, and I haven't looked too closely at it, but during reviewing, it was definitely not the same as the other temperature readouts, so we were seeing in the 50s on that when ASUS might be showing in the 70s, and AI suite and hardware monitor would generally be about the same with the temp and zero sensor as ASUS. The way ASUS takes their measurements, I'm not sure about Gigabyte, but it's, it's probably similar. Um, ASUS takes the uh, TSI temperature bus from AMD, take that data, they combine it with their own thermistor that is located on the motherboard, and then they use an algorithm to uh, effectively create a real world human scale temperature. The way the temperatures come out of the CPU, out of the TSI temperature bus, uh, the temperatures do not come out as the actual temperature. This is not new with Ryzen. We've been talking about this since FX. They don't. So if your if your CPU, let's say we take a thermistor and we stick it on top of the die in a world where the CPU can run in that scenario, um, you might see 75 Celsius or something like that. Under the series. We're time with or something. But the CPU. Its temperature reporting will look lower than that. And that's because they use an offset scale. We talked to Sam Mapsiger about this, about at, uh, he's an AMD corporate fellow, and confirmed that that's still how it works, just like the uh, So, temperatures, measuring them, it really it comes down to the, the thing that it always does, which is is your software accurate to the real world? And for a lot of the software right now, the answer is no. No, they have enough to do that sound. Yeah, I don't know, like anything else. I, I feel like I'm mostly yeah. repeating myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if I guess, um, I guess if anyone has any, any questions for us uh, in the chat about about either Ryzen testing or anything like that, um, you can go ahead and ask us in the chat if there's something you know we didn't answer. Right. Yeah. Please uh, post questions. I've got a bit more time, so. Yeah. Uh, um, while the, while uh, people are, are posting questions in chat, what do you think about uh, 1080 Ti release? Were you up that? Yeah, we covered the, both the, the we covered the Vega and the 1080 Ti events. They were on the same day. I had some else. I actually like, covered that Vega event. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't have a lot of thoughts. I don't know if a 35% number will hold up. Well, but did you, well, <laughs> did, did you notice that w when Jensen went into that whole 35% thing, it started off by saying that it was 35% faster in Prey than 1080 Victory. last year. That's how it started off, and then that continued into, it's just 35% faster. That, that's where it started. And I've seen him do stuff like that before. So Right. I'm yeah, I don't think we even mentioned it. Uh, actually, we didn't mention it in the review because it was one of those like, okay, well, I'll validate this myself, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, of course, it's it's 35% does sound a bit a bit high. I mean, Titan X Pascal versus 1080, how much faster right. is that on average? I mean, previously they said the the whole nine, uh, whatever GPU it was, maybe the 1080, is faster than SLI 980s or something like that. Uh, two times faster, I think. I don't know. I'd have to go look at my article from a year ago. But the, the number was not exactly always accurate. So that's just marketing. That's how marketing goes. It's accurate for one or two tests, and that's enough. <laughs> uh, good question from Final Roman. He said, what is the max voltage? I had emailed AMD about this. I think it was 1.37. Was that it? They said... Yeah, they recommended that we stick as close as possible, I think, to 1.365. Yeah, that's what, yeah, yeah. that's what it was. 
Yeah, 1.365. Uh, they had also told me TJ Maxx on the 1800X was 75 degrees Celsius. I'm um, yep. guessing that's the same across all Ryzen 7 CPUs. That would be my assumption, yeah. We were told the 1800X TJ Maxx is 75C. Is it possible to get over 3.9 gigahertz? I believe I did see one of one of the written reviews had gotten over the four gigahertz. Um, mine just mine couldn't uh, couldn't hit it stable. I was getting, uh, but I'm I'm hopeful that I might be able to get four or maybe even 4.1 when I get it underwater. Uh, my AM4 bracket for my Deep Cool Captain actually just arrived while we we're doing the stream. I got a text saying it was out there, so <laughs> I'm so I think I might be able to get a little higher because I was getting I got 74C on mine at 3.9 gigahertz and then. It, I could, I think I could, if I turn up the voltage and everything underwater, I might be able to get a little bit more. Yeah, um, so 3.9 gigahertz is uh, is about where we landed at the AMD event in San Francisco last week. 